Have you ever wondered how scientists name new elements, especially those with atomic numbers greater than 100? Well, that's the fascinating world of nomenclature we're stepping into today. Nomenclature, or the system of naming, is a vital part of chemistry, helping us make sense of the many elements and compounds we encounter. In the early days, naming was a bit of a free-for-all, with different scientists using different names for the same element. But as the field of chemistry expanded and evolved, the need for a standardized system became apparent. Enter the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC for short. They took on the hefty task of creating a universal system for naming elements, bringing order to the chaos. In our journey today, we'll delve deeper into this interesting process, focusing particularly on elements with atomic numbers greater than 100. By the end of this video, you'll understand the fascinating process of naming new elements in the periodic table. So, how does the process of nomenclature work for elements with atomic numbers greater than 100? Let's dive right into it. When a new element is discovered, it's initially given a temporary name and symbol by the scientists who discovered it. This is a systematic element named based on the atomic number. Here's how it works. The atomic number is broken down into its constituent digits. Each digit is then assigned a Latin prefix. For instance, the Latin prefix for one is un, for two is b, for three is tri, and so on. The element's name is then constructed by combining these prefixes in the order of the digits in the atomic number. But that's not all. To make it clear that we're dealing with an element, the name is finished off with the suffix ium. As for the symbol, it's derived from the first letter of each prefix used in the name. Let's illustrate this with an example. Consider an element with atomic number 102. The digits are 1, 0 and 2. According to the Latin prefixes, we get un, nil and b. Put these together and we have unnilbium. Add the ium suffix and we get unnilbium. The symbol would be unbe. Now this name and symbol are not set in stone. They're temporary placeholders used until the element's discovery is confirmed and a permanent name is decided. This might seem like a complex process, but it's actually quite straightforward once you get the hang of it. And more importantly, it's critical for maintaining order and consistency in the world of chemistry. Can you imagine the chaos if scientists around the world used different names for the same element? Or if two elements ended up with the same name? That's why we have this systematic nomenclature in place. This systematic nomenclature ensures that every new element has a unique and universally accepted name. But how does an element move from having a temporary name to a permanent one, you might wonder? Well, the journey is quite fascinating. After a new element is discovered, it's not immediately christened with a permanent name. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, plays a crucial role in verifying the discovery. This is a meticulous process that involves rigorous testing and retesting to ensure the element is indeed new and not a mistaken identity. Once the discovery is verified, the discoverers are then given the honor of suggesting a permanent name and symbol for their new element. This is not a whimsical task. The proposed name usually has a deep significance, often referencing mythological concepts, mineral, a place, or a scientist. This proposed name and symbol are then put under the microscope by IUPAC. They review it thoroughly, ensuring it adheres to their naming guidelines. Only after this careful scrutiny, the proposed name is ratified and becomes official. This rigorous process ensures that each new element's name is unique, meaningful, and universally accepted. So now you know how new elements earn their names. Isn't it intriguing? The journey from discovery to nomenclature is indeed a systematic and meticulous process, with the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, playing a crucial role. They ensure that each new element is recognized and named in a consistent manner across the globe. We've also seen how an element transitions from a temporary three-lettered name to a permanent one, often honoring a scientist, a place, or a concept. This world of nomenclature is vast and ever-evolving, just like the periodic table itself. If you have any thoughts or questions about this topic, or if there's something more you'd like to know, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you and continue this conversation. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Facts Academy 0122, to keep learning fascinating facts about science. Until next time.